since 1921. Prominent American paleontologist Walter Granger is braving the great Yangtze River to visit a remote area of southern China. His destination is Wushan Mountain in the Three Gorges region of Sichuan province. Granger's expedition will mark the start of one of the most significant stories in world archaeology. Sixty years later, in 1984, Chinese archaeologist Huan Wangbo also comes to the Three Gorges to visit Wushan Mountain. For the next 20 years, he'll make an annual pilgrimage to the location. And from 2003, French archaeologist Eric Boeda starts commuting from Paris to Wushan each autumn. So just what is attracting these eminent scientists to this spot? The answer is known as dragon bone. Not relics from a mythical beast, but rather a quest to unravel the secrets of a very real mystery that has remained buried in the dust for two million years. A mystery of our remote ancestors. So what is dragon bone, and what is its connection to human beings? Tales about dragons abound in Chinese folklore and culture. At locations where archaeologists discovered traces of ancient ancestors, scholars started to name them with words related to dragons. Nomazao Whatever its origin and use, it is dragon bone that leads to a major archaeological discovery at the end of the 19th century. In 1899, Wang Yirong, a government official of the Qing dynasty, visits Qianjin for treatment. His hobby is collecting metal and stone. He also has a habit of studying medicinal materials bought from local medicine shops. One day, he discovers some mysterious carved symbols on the so-called dragon bones and immediately sends someone to buy all the dragon bones he can find. Similar symbols, which he names as carved writing of the Yin dynasty, are present on most of these bones. Later, a Chinese paleography expert re-describes the symbols as script from the Shang dynasty. Called carapace bone script, they are the earliest Chinese characters discovered to date. It is now, in 1921, that the American paleontologist Walter Granger comes to the Wushan mountain area in the Three Gorges to seek out dragon bone fossils. He visits the local medicine shops and finds examples of exactly what he's looking for. Encouraged, he establishes a permanent base and employs villagers to dig up more of the bones.
Five years later, he leaves with literally thousands of dragon bone fossils from the region. The foreigner's surprising interest in old bones generates a gold rush-like excitement amongst the locals. Amongst them is Mu Jifu, a doctor from nearby Longping village. Tasuzin, Large quantities of dragon bone are sold to local medicine shops and other outlets. What few realize is that they are actually destroying valuable ancient relics and remains. Meanwhile, at another Chinese location, the 1930s see a dramatic find that becomes known as Peking Man. The discovery shocks the world as these skulls reveal that Peking Man lived at least 500,000 years ago. The skulls disappear when the Japanese army capture them during World War II but are still considered authentic by domestic and foreign archaeologists, since a number of experts are known to have examined them. At the time, prominent archaeologists believe that Peking Man is the earliest ancestor of the Chinese and Eastern Asian peoples, and the place where Peking Man was discovered is named the Dragon Bone Mountain. Across the world, in the East Africa Rift Valley, another find stuns the archaeological world. Discovered in 1974, the skeleton known as Lucy dates back a staggering 3.2 million years. From the analysis of her fossils, international archaeologists are unanimous that she is the earliest known ancestor of mankind. Ten years later, in 1984, a new group arrives at Longping village in search of dragon bone. It's an archaeological team consisting of experts in vertebrate paleontology and human paleoanthropology from the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Chongqing Museum of Natural History. Huang Wanbo is the team leader. By this time, the dragon bones around Longping have been pillaged by local villagers for nearly 20 years. So what remains for Huang and his team to find? Huang and his team find nothing in this deep and legendary cave. Villager Mu Jifu, however, provides a clue. <laughs> 
，我们就跟着他，到了一片玉米地。哎呀，钻进玉米地一看的话，里面全是全是这个小小的龙骨渣。我就随便捡了一大把，里面一看的话，有尖齿象的，有乳齿象的，还有猎狗的。那么这些东西啊，很清楚，都是中国造诣绝美的种类，而且实在很古老。那么给我一个启发，就是他们既然挖出来要卖供销税。供销税会不会保存一部分呢？晚上我们吃完饭就到了供销税，结果一位主人拿出来一大筐啊，我们一看到里头全是化石，而且保存的非常完好。嗯、我们就正式进行了发掘了，在发掘过程当中呢，发现的化石就越来越多，越来越多。为了研究方便，我们就把这个点就叫做龙骨坡。The Three Gorges of today came into being about 500,000 years ago. Before that, there were no high mountains nor big rivers or valleys, but rather an environment of lakes and forests with a warm and wet climate. According to the archaeological evidence, it is a very complex animal group. This animal group, first of all, it is to say 代表的是比较温暖的气候，而湿度来说，在当时应该是也是一个比较比现在要高的一个情况。因而呢，就是说它本身来说，是一个介乎森林和草原，或者说森林和这个灌丛啊这样子的一个环境。这样子的一个环境呢，是适合于古人类的生活。Representatives from the Wan County Museum and the Wushan Relics Protection Station join the team in the autumn of 1985, and a major excavation gets underway. This is the formal excavation site at Long Gupo. First, the team members clean up the work area, then start to dig for fossils following a meticulous plan. They judge and classify any fossils collected by the workers at break time. But it is Huang himself who makes the first breakthrough, with a tooth a bit larger than a broad beam. It looks like a pig's tooth, but the shape of the top and the marks and growth line on the tooth's surface are quite different from that of a pig. After thorough scrutiny, they decide it's the tooth of a quadramana, or four-handed primate. In fact, it's the tooth of a giant ape. For Huang, this opens up dramatic new possibilities. If early human fossils are found, the small slope at Wushan may well rewrite the history of human evolution. Discover the past with exclusive ancient history documentaries and ad-free podcasts presented by world-renowned historians from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of Pompeii to the rebellion of Boudicca and the mysteries of prehistoric Scotland. Immerse yourself in the captivating stories of this remarkable era by signing up via the link in the description. The very same day of the giant ape tooth discovery, Huang revisits the work site alone. Uh, 
，当在第八层那个有一个翻盖里头挑的过程当中呢，就有一块骨头，我就拿起来一看呢，哎呦，像个夏侯骨，然后呢，我就用那个梯子啊，轻轻的踢。结果一踢了以后呢，这个牙面就露出来了。一看呢、啊，毫无疑问，它不是一般猪啊、鹿的东西，很像是一个灵长类的一块骨头。后来我心情的的确确是很激动，突然心跳得很快似的。我一个人就拿到边上，然后呢，我就用那个棉花，让我们喝带的那个水壶的水啊，慢慢慢慢的把那牙面呢、啊，把那个土啊给它去掉了。一看呢，有两颗牙齿，然后我就告诉大家，咱们找到宝贝了，一个灵长类的，拙齿的一段下颌骨，而且有两个牙齿。The team members can barely contain themselves. From the abrasion degree of the tooth face and the shape features of the gum, a preliminary conclusion is drawn that the owner was an old female. The team name it the Wushan Old Lady. Spurred on by the great significance of the discovery, the following October, the combined archaeological team returns to Longupo once more. Including archaeologists and workers, the team now consists of 30 members. For archaeologists, patience and meticulous excavation are essential, but good luck is also very important. Huang Wanbo is a lucky dog. That's why he enjoys so many archaeological discoveries, a team member jokes. The question is, will Huang's luck hold? The answer comes almost immediately when one of the workers unearths a small fossil in the seventh layer. He looks at it for a while and then passes it to a researcher from the Chongqing Museum of Natural History. I 呃，杨兴龙就把那牙拿给我看，他说：“老公，你看这个是什么牙？”我，哎呀，我一看，我说：“这可个好东西，这是人牙。”这个牙呢，从它这个咬合面来说，呃，上头还有些乳凸起，没有经过磨损。按照出牙顺序来说，换这个恒齿，那也就是七八岁，所以呢，我们估计他是一个少年。再加上跟那个对比，跟北京猿人的女性的大小接近，估计她也许是个女的。Based on the degree of abrasion and the shape features, this time the archaeologists judge it to be the tooth of a young female and name it the Wushan Maiden. Through deductive research on the length of mandible and tooth fossils discovered in the excavations, they describe it as the Wushan Pithecanthrope. A number of early human being sites have already been discovered in different areas of China. So the key question for the archaeologists now is how far back the Wushan Pithecanthrope is from our era. How can they calculate its age, and is it human or just ape?
The archaeologists can estimate the relative date of the fossils by the condition of the stratum in which a fossil is discovered. So how will the archaeologists establish a conclusive date for the Wushan Pithecanthrope? They'll start with electron spin resonance or ESR tests. ESR tests应该是不年轻于 at a laboratory of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, researchers carry out a paleomagnetism test on the 100 soil samples taken from Longupo. The results reveal their age to be approximately 2,040,000 years. This conclusion, however, doesn't satisfy everyone, including paleoanthropologist Russell Searchon from Iowa State University in the USA. The American scholar casting doubt on the date of the Wushan Pithecanthrope comes to Longupo himself and collects mammal fossils from the fifth stratum, including the micro-species giant panda and the elephant-like cynomastodon. Then Searchon returns home with both his samples and the mystery. In America, with the help of an advanced dating method, he estimates that the fossils from the fifth stratum are over one million years old. Because the Wushan pithecanthrope fossil is from the eighth stratum, he concludes it must be considerably older. Finally, in 1995, Russell Searchon and Chinese archaeologists collaborate on a treatise entitled Early Homo and Associated Artifacts from Asia, which is published in the authoritative British archaeology magazine Nature. Le, le site de Longupo est, est connu euh, mondialement depuis euh, les publications qui avaient été faites euh, dans Nature. Et, euh, mais c'était euh, pour un, un chercheur euh, occidental, une espèce de, 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 de rêve de pouvoir travailler dessus ou de pouvoir un jour euh, voir le site. From the soil layer in this mysterious slope, Archaeologists discover 116 species and over 5,000 ancient mammal fossils. If we could travel back in time and view the area as it was two million years ago, we might spot species of elephant and rhinoceros. Maybe monkeys leaping around in the forest canopy, or a saber-toothed cat stalking its prey. The dating results of the Longupo stratum released by the Chinese and foreign archaeologists eventually eliminate doubts about the Wushan pithecanthrope's age. The consensus is that the tooth owner lived approximately 2,040,000 years ago. 
But Huang still faces another major question being raised in Chinese and overseas archaeology circles. From the mandible and three tooth fossils, he can determine that they belong to a kind of high-level quadrumana. But can he prove that they were human beings, not just apes? If he can, then the history of human origins may need to be rewritten. Academics are divided on the issue. Uh,其实什么古猿呢? If a skull or even limb fossils of the same time period as the Wushan Pithecanthrope can be discovered in the Wushan area, then the human or ape debate can finally be resolved. Archaeologists discover plenty of homos fossils and a small quantity of skulls. But there's one other thing that can really settle the issue. Gugadahuashi Previous evidence shows that human ancestors were capable of making tools two million years ago. If a stone artifact is discovered at the Wushan excavation, the Wushan old lady and the Wushan maiden may be proven to be the Chinese people's remote ancestors. The team focuses on the limestone terrains at Longupo. But from 1985 to 1988, apart from various species of animal fossils, four years of hard work only yields up two examples of unidentified spotted stones. The key question is, are they artifacts? 应该说呢，这两件石器是非常关键的，因为毕竟它是龙骨科遗址发现的最早的两件石石制品。当时呢，是由呃李延贤老师来研究的。那么他用专业的方法呢，对石器进行了很严谨的分析。那么它的结果
Buoyed by their success, the archaeologists now decide to change their excavation method, concentrating on the search for stone artifacts. And it pays off with a large number of exciting new finds. They're sent to eminent professor Jia Lunpo for detailed analysis. Famous French archaeologist, Professor Yves Copin, who had helped with the excavation of Lucy in Africa, is also surprised by the stone artifacts discovered at Longupo. Dans le, le bureau du, du professeur, dès 1995, je crois, euh, les, les pierres qui avaient été recueillies à cette époque à, à Langoupo. Et euh, ces, ces pierres me sont apparues tout de suite comme des pierres incontestablement taillées, des pierres sûrement taillées par, euh, par l'homme, donc des, des objets préhistoriques tout à fait certains. One day, in October 1998, while the team members are still searching for stone artifacts, a different kind of find adds another key piece of evidence. It's a relatively ordinary deer bone, but what is interesting is that it's been broken into three pieces. The fact that the bones join together perfectly poses a question. What broke them? Natural force or human power? Tashizaiko 他们生产石器呢Five years on, and 2003 sees a season with maple leaves dyeing much of the Longupo region red. New members join the combined archaeological team. Prominent French archaeologist Professor Eric Boeda of the University Paris Ex Nanterre suggests new methods for the excavation. He's convinced the stone artifacts were made by primitive humans. Globalement, ce sont essentiellement des outils qui sont façonnés. On peut dire que Longupo, eh bien, c'est pas les premiers outils. C'est déjà des outils qui sont évolués. Donc, a priori, Longupo est à un moment de l'évolution des techniques en Chine et on doit trouver d'autres sites plus anciens euh, avec ces objets, avec des objets plus primitifs encore. The Sino-French joint team arrives at the small slope that is attracting all the attention in world archaeological circles. It's now 19 years since Huang first came to Longupo, and he's keen to redouble his efforts to resolve the mystery, hoping for a breakthrough.
This time, his team changes the former pit area from two meters by two meters into four one meter by one meter pits and carry out a more meticulous excavation following procedures suggested by the French archaeologists. Almost immediately, they are stopped in their tracks by a new discovery. It's an area with a number of animal limb bones arranged in an unnaturally ordered and overlapping fashion. After careful analysis, they discover the finds are forelimb and backlimb bone fossils of large herbivorous animals, including elephants, cattle, and deer. Importantly, the fossils have smooth bone surfaces without any bite traces from carnivorous animals. This unusual collection astonishes the archaeologists. So why are the bones concentrated and buried on such a large scale? Why are there only limb bones? Where are their vertebras, ribs, pelvis, feet bones and skulls? Did they die naturally or drown in the river? Or were they killed by carnivores or human beings that could already make artifacts? Si les ossements avaient été amenés par la rivière, ils auraient tous été orientés dans le même sens. Et ce n'est pas le cas à Longupo. À Longupo, on a des os souvent complets qui sont orientés dans des directions différentes, sans traces de carnivore ou très peu de traces de carnivore. Si c'est un carnivore, on a plein de traces de carnivore, plein de traces de dents sur les os. Ce n'est pas le cas à Longupo. At the excavation site, besides a large quantity of limb bones of herbivorous animals, archaeologists also discover some stone artifacts and flakes mingled in with these bones. Significantly, there are distinct smashing traces in some of the deer bones. And the stone artifacts and limbs are from the same time and place. Collectively, the finds enable the archaeologists to build up a picture of the environment that Wushan Homo could have inhabited. It was a forested area, less mountainous than today. Prehistoric human beings usually ambushed their prey, using spears to stab the animals and then tracking them as they tried to escape. When the prey was weak enough, they'd finish it off. The animals would have lived below the cave at Longupo, with the prehistoric humans venturing out to hunt or collect carcasses to bring back to their shelter. After over 20 years of excavation at the Longupo site, fossils of Homo, giant ape, and 120 kinds of ancient vertebrate have now been unearthed. Many of the fossils leave clues to the times they lived and died in.
The archaeologists research European discoveries and come up with the following scenario. In traditional hunter-gatherer society, the males were usually in charge of hunting large animals, whilst the females concentrated on picking plants and hunting the smaller animals. After obtaining quantities of food, the females learned to store it back at their caves. A system of divided labor gradually developed. According to the fossils discovered in the cave at Longupo, archaeologists judged that the area was not only a beautiful Shangri-La-like location, but also a life and death arena. Saber-toothed cats would have been patrolling the area. And there were a large number of hyena packs. These were natural enemies of human beings usually attacking the Wushan Pithecanthropus in their caves. The hyena was a fierce animal that all ancient humans must have feared. Today, hyena packs still live on the plains of the East African Great Rift Valley. Wolf-sized animals, they are one of the fiercest carnivores in the world feared even by lions. At Longupo, the prehistoric human beings were only between one and one and a half meters in height. Survival would have been impossible if they hadn't developed stone artifacts and weapons. Although these stone artifacts may seem rudimentary, in the right hands they became lethal weapons. Today it is hard to be certain of their hunting system, but we do know that thinking and cooperation is very important for hunting, and that is a stepping stone to the birth of ideology and culture. The stone artifacts of Longupo exhibit different features from those of the East African Great Rift Valley, representing a unique early stone artifact industry and culture. As a result, the owner of these three teeth can be described as Wushan Homo, or man. Two million years ago, the Wushan Pithecanthropes led a primitive life, but their development easily surpassed that of animals. So, the existence and multiplication of the Wushan Homo proves that there were human beings in East Asia more than two million years ago probably the ancestors of Homo erectus in China. From从八十年开始在山峡工作 然后再往上元谋元人是一百七十万年，结果来就是蓝天元人一百一十五万年。那么加上知人，就是长阳人，接近二十万年。然后还有九万年左右的封建人，还有关东人，还有活梁人。也就是说，这长江流域从两百万年
，这就是它的发祥地。However, some doubts still remain about this great discovery. Because of the discontinuity of the archaeological process, anthropologists are still to work out exactly why the Wushan Homo left this place. Did their caves collapse? The hyenas break in? Or was there a sudden climate deterioration into an ice age? And where did they go? Like the discovery of the human ancestor Lucy in East Africa, the Wushan old lady and the Wushan maiden give us a chance to imagine their lives. But questions remain unanswered. How long did they live? How many children did they have? When and how did they die? So, can the Chinese assume they originated in the three gorges of the Yangtze River over two million years ago? Or are they descended from a more recent migration from Africa? Today, an international scientific debate continues to rage over the issue. For now, the dragon bones of Longupo provide a tantalizing glimpse into an ancient past that is our collective heritage. <laughs> <laughs>